In this video, we will use Power Automate to create a planner task using details from a SharePoint list. Let's get started. So before we create our flow, we need to already have an established SharePoint list. So you can create a list in SharePoint from a homepage of your SharePoint site. You can simply go to new and then select list. And once you've done that, it's going to put your new list in the navigation menu right here. So I've created one and I called it employee database. And what this list is, is a simple database of employee information. So I've got employee name, I've got their status. Are they a current employee, a former employee? I've got their role, I've got their email and location. And then I also have this column down here, which I've named planner. And what that is, is the URL value. And this will link people to the employee's planner. So for example, this final row down here under the planner column is a link that will open that person's planner. So this is the planner site, and this is crucial to have this so that we can link back to that person's planner by grabbing the plan ID from the URL right here, where we can see plan ID equals, and we're going to extract the plan ID so that we can use it in our create a new task action. So let's go and create our flow. Now for this example, I'm going to build an instant cloud flow, but of course you can set up the flow using a trigger any way that you would like. But for the example here, I'm going to manually trigger a flow and click create. So the first thing that I'm going to do is get items. So I'm literally going to get the details of my list that I was just showing you over in SharePoint. So if we search for the action called get items, it's going to be this action right here, which is a SharePoint connector. And now here is where we select our site address. And then we select our list name. And because this is getting items from this specific list, I'm going to put in the title, get items, employee database. Now we need to set up a filter query. Of course, you don't have to do this, but if you don't filter anything, it's literally going to give you every single item every single row of your list essentially. And so by adding a filter query, what we can do is we can narrow down to very specific row to only pull very specific rows. So for this example, I only want to return this bottom row right here. So if I look at this, I can see that the role here is a um, unique role from these other two roles, which is supervisor. So I'm going to select role equals contractor. And I'm also going to select status equals active, just to show you how we can put two expressions or two filters on this filter query. So the first one, as I mentioned, is role. So we'll do role equals, which is role EQ, and then a single quote, and then contractor. And then we also want to filter by status. So we do and, and then status, another equal, single quote, and active. So that's going to filter. And in our example, it's only going to re return the one row that you see at the bottom right here, which is perfect. So now that we've done that, we need to set up an action that will compose the plan ID of this person in this row here. So as I mentioned, we have a URL that we can extract from the plan ID from. So you have an option, of course, of just adding the plan ID directly into your list here. So I could create another column and call it plan ID. 
But the reason I'm going this route of just having the full URL, because this is useful for people to be able to jump to an employee's full Microsoft planner. So I don't want to mess with that or complicate it by having another, or instead of this one, by having a column just for plan ID. So I'll show you how to do that. So what we'll do is we'll put in a compose action and we're going to put in a split expression. So insert expression and then put in a split and the parentheses. And then in here, switch over to dynamic content and you can search for planner because that's the name of our column over on our list. And I also happen to put a description on that column, which is the full URL of the employee's planner. So this is the one that I want. And now what I do is after, it's still inside the parentheses, but after that bracket is I put in a comma and then a single quotes, and then I identify that I'm going to split this URL. So if I go to planner and show you that the full URL is here and I can simply split by where it says plan ID equals. So I'm going to copy that and then go here and paste that in plan ID equals. And then that's going to be where it splits. And that's going to result in a JSON output that has two lines. So the first line is the first part of the URL. The second line is just resulting in the plan ID. So that's going to be line one. So I put in a bracket and I put in a one. This, the, the output will be the first part of the URL is line zero. So now I can click add and that's going to result in the plan ID. So I'm going to make that the title of the action. Now, lastly, I can put in my planner connector for create a task. So if I search here, create a task, and then select the group ID. Now here, instead of selecting the plan ID, because this is a dynamic value. So what we need to do is enter a custom value and then click on our dynamic content. And then here's where we put in the outputs of our plan ID of our compose action. So that's going to create a new task inside this plan ID for this person. So now the title, we'll just call it daily work. And then down here in advanced parameters, if we click show all, I want to attach this to a bucket in planner. So I want to to be created under these, this payroll management bucket that I have here without selecting a bucket, it's going to create the task under every bucket that's here. So in order to have it be assigned to, or have it be created in within that payroll management bucket, we need to get all the buckets within that planner. So in order to do that, we'll need to have a new action and I'm going to put it right above the create a task. And if you search planner and see more, there is an option for list buckets. We need to list all the buckets within that plan. So we're going to select our group ID and then the plan ID. Once again, we're going to add our outputs here and now that's going to list all of our buckets but we only want to return that one specific bucket right the planner the bucket in planner that was called payroll management so what we do for that is we are going to add another action and this is going to be a filter array action because this output of this list buckets action is an array 
So in the from on this, we're going to select this value here of this buckets. And then we're going to do the filter query is going to be value name, the name of the bucket is equal to, and this is where we put in payroll management. All right, now we have that, but before we can proceed further, there's one more thing that we must do. This is going to filter for that very specific bucket. And then we can go to the create a task and add in the bucket ID here, which is essentially the dynamic content of the filter array. You can see value ID, the ID of the bucket. But if you do that in the new designer, it's going to fail. Your flow is going to fail. And the workaround for that, the simple solution in this case, very simple, is just to go up and toggle to the classic designer. So we're going to save and switch. I cannot explain exactly why it fails, but it, it will fail at least at the time that this video was created. And it seems based on other, um, similar flows I've seen other people build, it has been this way for a while that you'll have to toggle to the classic designer. So now we can go to, now that we're in the classic designer, we'll go to create a task and we'll go to the bucket ID and we will enter a custom value. And then the dynamic content of the filter array has the ID of the bucket, which is this one here. So we can add that in there. And now we are all set in the, in the new designer, it will not let you add this body filter array for some reason. It will put it in as a value, um, and that's where that's where the flow fails. But by doing it this way, we should be all set. So let's go ahead and test this. So we will save first, and then I'm going to run a test. Run flow, done. Let's watch this run successfully and then hop over to the planner. I will refresh and I will see that new task created under the payroll in, inside the payroll management bucket. And it is all set to go for that particular person who owns this planner. So I hope that you guys found this video useful. And as always, I will see you in the next video. Take care, everyone. Bye-bye.